Hey guys, we're gonna do a Go Fast Campers V2 review and walk around. We've had it for a couple months now. We've done a few different trips, uh, some single night trips and a multi-night trip. It's mounted on my 2015 Toyota Tundra. So I'm gonna show you guys around the exterior of it, uh, the inside of the bed of the truck, and then we'll pop the tent up and I'll show you what's going on there. So here on the passenger side of the truck up at the front, I've got two different Go Fast Campers brackets, one for my radio antenna and one for my Baja Designs S1 light. This is a uh, exterior scene light, uh, just for some light in the camping area. This passenger panel here has two built-in locks with the latches. It's supported by two gas struts. It helps lift the panel up and it keeps the panel up once you uh, let go of it. The frame of the camper here is all aluminum, some aluminum tubes here and this horizontal rail is sealed to the bed of the truck with a double bulb seal. Back to the extrusion uh, slot track here, you can mount accessories all along this tracking system with some uh, T-nuts. So on the back here, I've got an Expedition 1 rear bumper. It's the dual swing gate model with obviously some gas cans on that side and my tire and trash bag mounted on this side. If you guys want another video about this stuff or some details, uh, feel free to comment and I'll, I'll answer them. Um, the back of the GFC specifically, we've got this rear door, again with the same locking latches and the third brake light. I have some more Baja Designs S1 lights mounted up top. Well, let's get this rear bumper opened up and I'll show you the inside of the GFC. So for starters, the rear door has a rubber seal along the back here that seals to the tailgate. There's also seals around the edges and I'll show you that. So GFC includes these small round seals around the three edges. And then I went on Amazon and grabbed uh, tailgate seals that go around the three edges of the tailgate. I also added some uh, bedside stiffeners here just to help prevent any uh, sort of cracking down here in the corners. GFC has designed these new latches so you can lock yourself inside the tent at night once you close the rear door. That's a pretty good option and uh, added security bonus there. So up here inside the bed of the truck, I haven't figured out what sort of uh, storage system I want to do yet, whether it's a deck system or if I want to build my own drawer system. Uh, so it's just open for now. Uh, the GFC mounts to the uh, stock OEM Toyota track, which I believe comes in Tundras and Tacomas. They have these four, well, two on this side, two on the other side, but four total of these custom brackets they designed. I also added this uh, electrical panel here for auxiliary power. It lights up my exterior scene lights, and then I also have a 12 volt cigarette port and some USB options and uh, some current voltage for my truck battery. So there's a few different options you can choose with the GFC. Uh, I opted for the front and the rear window on this rear panel. I liked that option because you can see from the interior of the cab all the way out the back. So let's get the ladder set up and we'll open the tent. Through my research, I decided I wanted to get the iCamper ladder. It was one of the only ones that I found on the market with an angled step, and it makes it a lot more comfortable to climb up. This is the stock included iCamper tabs and pins. I've temporarily made a couple just aluminum brackets on the side of the camper here. That's not my final product. I'm not super happy with it, but it's something to mount to now just so I can use the tent. So we'll get this thing set up and I'll show you how it works. Pull the pins out, expand, Expand the ladder, throw them up there next to my brackets. Slide that pin through. Slide that pin through and it's ready to go. It's mounted, stabilized. So now I'll jump up here and get the back open. Before I open the tent here, I just wanna take a second and talk about the latch system. The GFC latch has a built-in uh, pin that you can depress and it would lock the latch in place. Right now it's um, out because the latch is unlocked. Right next to it here, I have a, a Shitco Rainfly rod mount. 
I'll show you that in a second. And then that Baja Designs S1 light that I had mentioned earlier. So you just pull these levers out on each side. And then there's this flat uh, rail here. You just lift up right on it. There's two gas struts built into the tent that help uh, lift the tent up the rest of the way. The tent will hold 500 pounds when it's in the closed position up there on the beef racks and it'll hold 100 pounds in the up position. So you can easily put kayak, surfboards, uh, mountain bike, although it'd be very tall, um, some wood, like a Home Depot trip or something like that. So with those Shitco blocks that I was mentioning, you get two um, little tabs here that you attach to the tent material and a couple of rain fly rods. So we'll get those mounted up. You just attach these to the corner of the tent material, clamp them down one on each corner. Grab a rain fly rod, one end into the bracket on the camper, the other end through that tab. Same on this end, bend the rod up, stick it through there. And now it keeps this fabric nice and tight. It's a sun and weather shield for this opening on the back of the tent. One thing I didn't touch on is I choose to mount my ladder on the driver's side. Uh, I prefer to camp on the passenger side. That's where I have my fridge mounted in my truck is over on the passenger side door. So I tend to cook off my tailgate and then hang out off my passenger side. So that was my justification for putting it over here. Um, so let's go up and we'll check out the tent now. The tent material is real thick. GFC's got all the specs on the actual material. Um, they've got some really heavy duty zippers with the zipper and a, a small leader line coming off the, the zipper. So behind the regular tent material, they also have screen mesh, obviously for the bugs. Again, um, heavy duty zipper on that. You can take both of these or one separately. You can roll them up. The camper's got these loops included with it and the carabiner included. You can roll up um, the tent door and keep it up out of the way. There's options up here with the tent as well, just like there was down there with the windows. The rear door here is standard included door. The two side doors, the one on the passenger side and this one here that I just showed you guys, that's an option. Uh, obviously I picked that because I've got the two doors here. Um, they all three have that bug mesh screen that can all be rolled up. There's also the triangle windows up front. We'll show you that here in a second. That, those are included as well. So just these two doors on the side are options. We've stayed um, in some warm weather, some cold weather, and some windy conditions out in Death Valley, and this thing held up great. Um, we'll bring you up top here and show you the bedding layout. So here's the bedding layout up here. Um, it easily sleeps me and my wife. You could probably fit a small kid and a dog up here as well. I have only one real main complaint about the camper, and that's gonna be the bedding, the mattress. Um, I know that's very opinion based, so for some people it might be great, but for me and my wife, we're side sleepers. Um, so the included foam down here is only about two inches thick, and we were real uncomfortable the first couple nights. Um, we did some testing with some foam egg crate that was about two inches and left that on top of here. So we were totaling about four, but we just pushed right through the egg crate onto this uh, mattress pad, the included one we still weren't very comfortable. It was better, but not great. So we decided to spend the money on an Xped Mega Mat Duo. It fits perfectly in here. I've got, um, it's deflated by the way, in this position. It's only about three quarters of an inch thick in the deflated mode, um, but it goes up to about four inches thick and it is so comfortable. We slept so good. We did a multi-night trip to Death Valley and we slept great. We woke up in the middle of the night, used the restroom, went right back to sleep. It was, it was awesome. And then on top of it, 
my wife got this uh, rumple blanket from REI. It's uh, down filled, so it goes almost paper thin. Um, but when you're ready to use it, it puffs up and, and insulates you really well. We don't use any sleeping bags. We just sleep with this right here, the X-Ped, this down filled blanket and a couple pillows. So the only thing I'm removing out of here to close the tent is the air from the pad and the two pillows and everything else stays up here. It closes down great. Um, so back to the fitment, the X-Ped is probably 14 inches short up there in the wedge but that really doesn't matter because if anything if you're super tall maybe your feet would go off the end of the x ped but i'm six foot and my feet don't hang off the end and even if they did what does it matter um, so for the width um, there's a couple inches of room on each side which makes a big difference because when you close down the tent it gives a little bit of um, leeway for the material to collapse in um, what else is up here? It's got a translucent roof. Um, I have a couple solar panels mounted on the top, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Uh, that helps cut down on sunlight coming through here. My wife and I definitely prefer a darker sleeping area. Um, so if those panels weren't up there, it probably would be a little bit bright, but some of you want to get up with the sun and the translucent um, attribute of this wouldn't really matter. So as I mentioned earlier, these two windows up in the front, these kind of wedge shaped windows, um, I leave them down partially. Uh, it helps let air es escape out of there when I'm closing the tent down. You can also completely open them up. You can roll this tent material out of the way, tuck it in. If I had two hands down there, it'd be a little easier. Tuck it in and these will stay open as well. Um, the screen mesh the bug mesh whatever you want to call it on those two windows um, is not removable so it's just the tent material it has a the camper comes with that bungee cord type rope up there in the front that helps suck the two tent sides in um, so when you're closing it you don't have to try and get all the way up there to push the tent material in one thing I forgot to mention about the roof area is it has this built-in track system on each side. Um, it's a T-slot just like the outside and it's good for mounting lights or any other accessory that you'd want to mount up there uh, while you're sleeping. So now the tent's open, I came back down here to be able to show you the floor of the tent or the roof depending on which way you're looking at it. But it's a completely modular setup. So if you don't want to do the ladder on the exterior like we did, you can open the floor or the sleeping pad of the tent and you can access the tent that way through here. So that's really cool, especially for inclement weather. Um, you can be hanging out in here while it's raining and then you can get up into the tent without ever having to go outside and get wet. Um, give me a second and I'll get this all opened up for you and you can see how modular it is. So here's a one square panel these will all stack up top if you want to um, it's a little bit easier for me to stack them down here so here's a pad and then this panel moves all over the place so you can put this panel lengthwise um, GFC likes to refer to that as bunk mode because you can sleep one person on this side and then over there would stay open. Um, you can slide it all the way forward like it was or all the way back like this and you can stand up uh, kind of more in the middle section and use this as a, a workstation for a laptop or something and then look out the back of the tent at the same time or you can take completely take it down like that. And like I said, um, these all stack right up there in the front. So this would all be out of your way. Um, but if I stacked it up there, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm trying to show you. So I brought it down here. So now the whole bed of this truck is open. You can stand up here. It's probably eight or nine foot ceiling now. Um, so you could easily hang out in here when it's raining or snowing or windy, bad weather. All right, I'm gonna throw this back together and then there's a couple more little features in here that I wanted to show you.
so that big panel goes back in. You throw that pad back up there. There's a hard side to this and the padded side, so obviously the hard side's gonna go down. Same with this one, hard on one side, soft on the other. So that's all back together. Super quick, modular, easy. The couple things I wanted to show you down here, um, there's these silver Allen bolts all over the interior of this thing. Those can come out and GFC designed it so you can mount accessories with those. There's also one more track up here at the front that goes left to right, um, side to side. You can mount lights in there um, or any other accessory that you want. Well, that does it for the tent portion of this. I'll collapse it down and show you guys how that works. So we gotta zip the zippers about halfway down. three quarters or so. That way when you're closing the tent, this thing isn't flapping all over the place. So all my doors are set. The zippers are in roughly the right spot. You grab the tent material, pull down, and then grab onto that loop at the top. So there's a bunch of air in here right now. So I squeeze it down and get a bunch of the air out and then I'll lift it back up some and start tucking the tent material in. I have to be a little bit extra careful because I do have that X-ped in there. So I do an extra couple seconds of uh, tucking in on the material here. If you didn't have the X-Ped, it's really super seamless. I just spend a couple extra minutes doing it. Make sure all the little loops are in, the zippers are out of the way. Hit the latches forward, there it is. All locked down, closed up, that quick and easy. So up here in the front of the truck, I've got a C4 Overland bumper a whole bunch of Baja design lights, some LP9s in the middle, some S8 light bars, a worn winch, and some Factor 55 accessories on the winch. I've got some Squadron lights for the fog pocket kit, um, and some LP4s as my A-pillar lights. So back to the GFC, um, we've got some Max tracks mounted up top with some Axia alloy brackets. Um, those are rock solid, no vibrations, no issues at all. Um, so those are working out well. Um, behind that, I've got two 100 watt Renogy solar panels for a total of 200 watts. Uh, I made some custom aluminum brackets. That way the panels would sink down in between the uh, support bars and sit pretty low against the roof. Um, so those panels uh, run into my truck where I've got a Yeti uh, Goal Zero 500 uh, battery. So I'm super happy with the roof layout. It's working great so far. Well guys, I think that does it for this video. Um, just a couple final thoughts about the camper. Overall, super happy with it. I only have that one main complaint about the comfortableness of the sleeping pad. But once we added that X-Ped Mega Mat up there, it's been totally comfortable. So um, super happy with it now. Uh, we've been over some pretty rough roads with it and it's held together great. Um, it's pretty lightweight. It's only about 275 pounds. The truck doesn't even notice it's back there. Um, we plan on going on quite a few adventures with it. Um, already have two or three planned and in the works. So go ahead and like and subscribe uh, to the channel if you would. Um, come back, check out those adventures that we're going on. You can also follow us on Instagram at prospect underscore overland. Again, thanks for checking out the video and we'll see you guys soon.